Okay, so with the 1660 Ti, there is obviously a very easy comparison to compare it to the 1060. And there's been a lot of kind of people chit-chatting about the possibility of it just being a bit of a hashed rebrand, you know, just kind of like a, giving it a bit of a clock speed boost or something like that, especially where they've used the number one right from the beginning. And one of the things I will say is, as you'll see when I bring this spec thing up from the, uh, so all the details of the two cards side by side, it's really that I think they were a little bit scared about using GTX with the number two. Um, but also, if they were to have called this the RTX 2050, for example, I think people would have, then would have natively thought it was a little bit lower down the pack. I think it's all to do with some stupid focus group that they've paid and that's how they've decided what the numbers are going to be. But I do think this could have been the GTX 2050 and just use a G rather than the R. It is a Turing based GPU though um, and uh, one of the things that you can see at the top, you've got 10 SMs on the 1060 uh, but you've got 24 on the 1660 Ti. 1280 CUDA cores, that's gone up to 1536. With the boost, there's a bit of a increase as well, but not by a massive amount. When you think about all of the extra CUDA cores running with that boost, it's a fair old change. And also, there is a manufacturing process change as well. So it's gone down from 16 nanometer to 12 nanometer. Now, uh, the reference price for the 1660 Ti is going to be £259 in the UK. Um, and w when I say reference, basically what that means is the very, very basic cards um, uh, will be that or around that sort of price. But then when you get the aftermarket cards from the vendors, so like with better coolers or bigger overclocks, all of that sort of thing, the price will then sneak up a little bit. The MSI, as I said, is coming in at £309.99, so it's like a £50 increase. And then when you look at the P when you look at the card though, it does still look small, but it isn't the reference PCB. There's about an extra 15 to 20 millimetres of room underneath the card, but you still get the 8-pin GPU, uh, sorry, PCI Express on the end. There's two Torx 3 fans on it. There is a brace that runs around it. And um, when we go into the strip down, you'll see that that brace actually calls the memory uh, as well. And it's got a really nice back plate on it as well. But one thing I think we should move on pretty quickly is uh, to go to the strip down, but I do want to just mention adaptive shading. Now this is something that is going to have to be implemented by developers. It's not something just natively in the driver that you can turn on to every game. So it's not something that Nvidia do specifically, it's got to be implemented into games. And Wolfstein uh, Stein is weirdly the game uh, at launch that supports it, and that's a Vulcan game. But essentially what you can do is you can get up to a 40% performance boost, be, um, sorry, up to 40% less pixel shading, because essentially it doesn't shade everything, it just shades the bits that you kind of don't need or aren't going to see, and apparently there's no um, uh, loss in you know actual uh, picture quality. But with it just being Wolfstein that supported, and you know, it's kind of early days, I'm not even bothered to look at it for this one. It's going to need to get rolled out into more games before I think it's going to be worth noting, because it's kind of a bit snake oil at the moment, and we need to see it rolled out into more titles before it's going to be really worthy of someone making a purchase based on that alone. But if we go to the strip down and then we can talk about performance.
with it all stripped down, just so that you can get a nice slow look around and see what's going on. It's not the most exciting of PCBs, but Again, just to give you a quick look around, just to be absolutely clear as well, this is the way that the thermal paste arrived. I'm assuming that there is a fuse as well. I don't know 100%, but they have started appearing on a lot more GPUs lately. I will ask the question though. Love the clarity on this camera. It might take a little while for it to focus when I judder, but... One there as well, not? might not be a fuse, it's only a punt, I guess. Anyways, people, so you've seen her naked, um, and that's something I'm going to try and do in the videos a lot more now is give you a nice, sped up, very quick look at, at me breaking it down. But then also, now what I'm going to show you it is beside me at the moment, but I can show you it in a system as well. So in the normal configuration, you can just see that you get the uh, MSI logo right near the PCI or where it screws in, the kind of slots at the back of the case. And then you do get a tiny little flash from the lines underneath. But it's not really until you put it into a vertical mode you can see those. But I've done it in both. I don't necessarily think that a lot of you out there are going to end up paying for a riser card or going down this route. But because the cards are a bit small, if you were to have this in an ITX case where the motherboard, for example, was in a horizontal rather than a vertical layout, it could then expose this in through vents or even in a window on one of the side of the ITX cases. So you can see the extra uh, lighting. And one of the things I will say is uh, when I reviewed, and it's live on the channel, I did review the RTX 2080 Ti Lightning by MSI. I did say that the software was really, really glitchy. Well, it now appears because I'm running the exact same version of the software, but with this, and it works much, much better. So with the lightning, I was having to, to set static colors. I was actually having to restart the system and then restart the software. With this, I didn't get any issues. So I do think it's lightning specific. Uh, but I've got it in a system with the X399 Meg creation, uh, and it just means that I can show you with the, all the lighting syncs, because uh, I think a lot of you, I would be one of them that would want a system that was all uh, in, it, it all matched, so MSI motherboard, MSI graphics card, and it just gives you an idea of it all kind of combo together. If you're wondering as well, the memory of um, only just reviewed this yesterday, there again, there's a video on the channel and that's of the Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB. So they would normally change as well, but it's not yet talking to the MSI software, but there has been some SDK updates and the vendors are meant to be rolling this out fairly sh uh, quickly. So technically, it might not be that far off. So that's quite a good thing. Anyway, on a, to performance, please go and have a look on the OC3D website because there are a lot more games there and it's probably going to be easier for you to see a bulk of the graphs as well because the graphs can get fairly big. And the reason why they're fairly big is we've left all the other RTX ones in at the top. Um, but we've also kind of given you a little bit more meat at the bottom of the graphs. Now, if a card is in one graph and then not in another, it's just because we, um, uh, we might not have had the chance to have retested that yet because the amount of testing to keep the graphs with everything in the, exactly the same one is just immense. Uh, but we've given you a fair kind of like mix in the bulk of them. The ones that I'm going to show you uh, on here today go back to even um, past the 1060, but 1060 might even be at the bottom of some of the graphs and then the, the 1660 is a little bit further up. Anyway, clock speeds. As I've said in the past, 
Clock speeds are important, but it's the average clock speeds that are most important. So uh, with these, you can see we've got the manual overclock at the top, then you've got the overclock scanner in the middle, and then you've got the, um, the normal out of the box ones at the bottom. With the um, uh, Strix, weirdly with the Strix, that actually did rather well, but it was just fitted and forgotten about. We didn't even hit the um, overclock button because it's an overclock mode in uh, GPU tweak, which you can just flick and it just it has a profile saved for you. And um, the version of Afterburner that we got with the card didn't have any kind of version of that. So you would have had to have done it all kind of manually. But anyway, they did all rather well. But the other thing with the overclock scanner is that is now, it has been implemented into Afterburner, which is kind of nice. And that's kind of like an auto overclock thing. Raz, there is, um, with the Asus one, it's a profile that gets added, but there is also OC scanner as well. So it's super complicated, but anyway, so you've got lots of uh, results there. As you can see, we were in the 1900s and even up to the 2000 marks for uh, the bulk of them with the Gamer Next doing a 2100 peak at one point. But again, remember what I said, it's about the averages. The averages really do make a difference. Um, 3D Mark, huge graph, and it's 3D Mark Fire Strike Ultimate. So this is 4K. Now this is incredibly stressful because it's 4K, and we do only have six gigabyte of memory. But don't forget, you can go to the Overclock 3D website to go and have a look at the normal Fire Strikes. You can go and have a look at the uh, Time Spies. There's there's loads more there if you want to go. And don't forget, you can obviously compare these results with the results that you're currently getting with your current system as well. Um, so loads there, the thing at the bottom you can kind of see that it's uh, much quicker than the 1060, it's quicker than overclocked 1060s, kind of floating around the 590, so the RX 590 um, stuff and then once you overclock, you know, they're kind of like, it's around that kind of ballpark with the 4K stuff. Then when you go into F1 2018, uh, in case you're wondering why the 580 Strix and the 1060 Strix doesn't have a 4K result, it's not that it didn't do it, it's just we didn't bother testing it because it, the results were so low when we first tested the cards. But you can, I, I would kind of draw your attention even to 1440 with this game. And one of the things I will say when we do do these um, testing as well, we max the game out, so it's resolution, say 1080, and then we turn everything on that we can do, AA up as high as we can do. So we don't make life easy for them either. So to see the kind of boosts to go from the 1060 or even the 580 up to the 1660 Ti is a fair old leap. Same with uh, DSX, which is obviously incredibly stressful. And I'm kind of waffling because we're do one of the things I'm doing now is I'm actually overlaying some actual game footage done with this card. Now that's something I do want to stress. It's not a generic piece of B-roll. The, the footage that you're seeing the, is actual game footage filmed on the MSI 1660 Ti Gaming X. And that's gonna be the same with all of the uh, graphics card reviews that I do now. We're overlaying that extra part just so that you can uh, get a proper feel for what's going on. And we're using Afterburner as well to put the overlay on so you can see actual frames per second as it's running through them. Anyway, so DSX, uh, again, really nice boost over the 1660. And then Far Cry, pretty much the same thing. I mean, when you think about the fact that you're getting 100 frames per second um, in 1080p with a 1660 Ti overclock, but even at 4K it was doing 38. Now, one of the things I would say is I, I wouldn't suggest that it's a 4K card, but the fact that we've even bothered or felt like it was necessary to bother benching it is fairly indicative of it's a relatively good card. Um, but really, I think 4K still requires a lot too much horsepower. So the way I would kind of be looking at these is high frames per second with 1080p, decent frames per second in 1440. And also if you went 1440, you could release some extra frames per second by turning the anti-aliasing down a bit. So performance wise, it did incredibly well. The one thing that we are going to need to talk about in relation to the um, Gaming X specifically is, is it worth the 50 pounds above the reference price? 
Now there's always going to be a lot of drama. A lot of people are going to say all the cards should just be 259, but it's never going to be that way with a card with a better cooler, extra cooling, the fact that you've got lights and all of that sort of stuff. Yes, it may not be for everyone, but you can obviously still go and get one of the 259 cards if you want. And hopefully next week I'll have a 259 card by MSI to be able to review for you anyway. So I don't think £50 over the 250 is that bad a price. It is a lot cooler, but and it does look a lot better, but they would be really the two points that I would be saying that you get extra over one of the 259 cards. And it's going to be, uh, it's much prettier to look at, it's much cooler, it's going to be much quieter. Performance wise, there won't ever be an extra 50 pounds worth of raw FPS numbers with really any of the cards. So you just have to make peace with it. So. Am I going to tell you not to buy it? No. Am I telling you, going to tell you that you should definitely go and buy the Gaming X? No, I'm not either. I'm just going to give you the information so that you can decide whether you think it's going to be worth the uh, extra money. Yes, you do get to a grey area point when you get up and above £300 and you do need to start thinking about um, RTX 2060s, but it's going to come down to your specific budget. You might not want the tiny little reference card in your machine, but it will do great for 259. And I think it down at this kind of area of the market, it's a very um, valued kind of thing to consider as well, because you might just be talking about you just want plain performance numbers for as little money as you can possibly spend. And that's going to be great. But when you get up to the uh, the... I'm like the, looking at the expensive 1660 Ti. If you then go and say, well, I could just go and get a 2060, you're then going to be back looking at a lower end 2060. So it's kind of, you, you're going to have to make up your mind what is going to be the most important thing for you. Aesthetics wise, you're either going to like the, the MSI aesthetics or you're not. Um, there's something about the fact that the heatsink hangs off the end a little bit with this one that I'm, I'm, I've not quite made my peace with yet. But the cooler itself is quite nice. When you put it in a static colour, I kind of like it. I'm not a favour. I'm not a personal fan of it all kind of rotating all the time. But in there like that, nice and monochrome, not offensive. You could obviously flick it over to a red or a green or a um, yellow or whatever to suit your rig. Or you could just put a normal panelled window on it and just focus on the fact that it could actually be quite quiet in a relatively well airflow case and just live with it and game on it and be happy. But the most important thing is 1660 Ti, nice increase over the 1060, good price point where they come in from 259, um, and I think they've had a nice jump in performance for that as well. So it, all, it, all around, it's kind of, it's a good thumbs up, and it's actually nice that it's not a ridiculously um, expensive amount over the base reference point so yeah all round you've got all your details you need to do don't forget you can subscribe you can i'd love to hear comments go to the overclock 3d website oc 3d website so that you can have a look but also if you've uh this is one of the first videos that you found of mine then um yeah don't forget you can subscribe as well if you would like to there's quite a bit more planned there is also going to be um the asus strix review it's going to be on the channel and also the asus phoenix review is going to be on the channel in case you're thinking that's unfair that there's only one msi and two asus's msi's isn't even here at the time of filming and uh, Gigabyte still haven't got uh, many samples for the UK, so that might be a week or so out yet. But I've got as much as I can do done for launch. So please go and take a look. But for now at least, this is the tiniest one with the first of the 1660 Ti reviews for NDA out. Ding!